Hello and welcome back to another video where we talk about navigation in React Native using the React Navigation Library. So in the previous video in this series about React Navigation, we already created a stack navigator with some screens, home screen and profile screen. So as you can note as you notice, there's a header that's automatically provided by React Navigation. So this is a header component that contains a title for both Android and iOS. This is the default behavior of uh, native apps to have their titles here on the left for Android and then on the center for iOS. And then for the back button, there's also a native behavior or native UI design for the back button on Android and for iOS. So, in this video, we're going to be exploring how to override the default settings or the default styles of the header bar as you can see here. So, let's get to it. And what better starting point to be in than the documentation? So, before we go into the documentation, let me remind you again that this environment is in your repository on my account. The link is in the description below. It's called Expo Playground and I am currently branched out to the stack navigation demo that was in our previous video. So feel free to check that out if you want to recreate your own uh, stack navigation setup from scratch. But for this video, we will be starting here where we left off. So let's go to the documentation of React Navigation. Yep. So here, just click read the docs. And conveniently, the section where we configure the header bar is just around here. Called configuring the header bar. So we click on that. And the first section is changing the options with regards to the title. So, for example, if you're not satisfied with the title by default, which is, as you can remember from the previous video, it came from the name of the route. So, the default behavior is to take the name of the route and place it in here as a title. So, what if you don't want that? You can override it by specifying an options prop that contains an object with the field title. All right, so we'll try it now. But first, we have the format due to our screen size or window size of the VS Code. So under component, just press options and then create an object, press enter, and then this is where you'll specify the title. So for example, um, on our profile, you could specify your account. All right, so this is successfully changed, and then you could do the same for home. can copy paste the same code why don't we make it like for example dashboard or something so we change the titles for both screens by specifying their respective options prop and passing in a title to both so you've successfully modified the header bar for the first time so the params in the title, we will not be discussing for this video because the route that params is for another video. <laughs> so we'll discuss it later on another video. So we'll skip over it now. And options as well as set options as well. 
because this talks about how to change the title dynamically when you press a button. So we'll just focus on modifying the header styles. So for this features, we'll just skip over it for now. So when you want to change the style of the header, there are three properties that you need to uh, remember or take note. So we talk about the header style. There's the header style uh, ob uh, field, and then the header tint color, and then the header title style. So we'll just go to the code, uh, or you can read through this on your own time. But I will help you through the process now. If you just go and follow the code, it will. It will tell us to create a header style field that has an object with a background color. So let's just copy the color for now. F4511E. So what will this do? So if you'll notice, the header is now colored orange or red-orange. But the dashboard still looks um, not aligned. <laughs> so it looks like it's improperly styled with the header background color because I think the ideal color is supposed to be white. So what if you wanted to change the color of the title? So this is where the second property comes in, which is the header tint color. So header tint color, changing that to changing that to all F's either lowercase or uppercase so this will make the title color white instead of the default black so that's the purpose of header tint color and then for the header title style so the header title style is the style of the text component that Jack Navigation provides when rendering the title here in your header bar. So header title style. Change the font weight to bold. Bold. So you can see immediately what it does. It just changes the font weight. So what if we want to change the font size? Well, that's also possible as well. Make it 24, it will be super obvious. So let's just keep it a bit larger, 18. So what if we want to, since it talks about the text style, why don't we change the color from here? So what if we remove this header tint color just do some experimenting. What if we wanted to change the style of the dashboard color again? But here, so what will happen? Let's just make it consistent with the background color. So let small letters. So dashboard became white. So if you'll notice the header tint color and specifying a color property inside the header title style accomplishes the same thing so you can choose between what you want to do okay so hopefully that's clear and let's just look when we navigate to the profile screen now if you go to the profile screen you'll see that the style is inconsistent so this is a um undesirable user interface if we go to the dashboard here and then go to a new screen with a different looking header so that's a problem and one that we can change by applying the same thing so we can copy the style here To the profile uh, options 
So we can see that you've successfully completed it. They both have the same styles now. Yep. Is it good? So the question now is what if you have five screens? More than these two. And you need to change the background color for each. So maybe what you can think of is creating a um, a variable, for example. You create a variable that will hold. So why don't we call it header styles or style. Then we place the objects here. Yeah. Then we just use the spread operator to copy all those uh, objects to this options. Will it achieve the same result? Of course it will. And then removing for the profile, removing that code for the profile. And then applying the same thing by using the spread operator to copy the objects. So it will render the same thing. So you can do that, but that's additional effort. So React Navigation has already a built-in solution for this. And it's not by creating a common header style object, which is also um, an approach or a, a, an alternative way that you can do it. But this one is much more proper and in line with the documentation. So before we proceed, let's just visit the documentation again and go to the next section, which is sharing common options across screens. So when we say you're sharing co common options across screens, the first, um, the first thing that should happen when, sh when you say co sharing common is if we change the background color once, it should be applied to all of the screens, header bar. So exactly like what we did here, except we did it manually through this spread operator. So what we will do instead is remove the code, keeping the modified title, of course, but we specify a screen options prop under the navigator. So this is not specific to a certain screen, but for the entire stack. So we just copy the styles, remove this variable, and then we create a screen options, which is just like the options here, but this style, this options, this configurations will be applied to all the screens that are under or the children of this navigator. So pasting. Now get the styles that you want. across all the screens so this is the more proper solution if you want to modify the header style while keeping a distinct title on your specific screen so the header style will be applied to all the screens and then the options will be specific so for example if you wanted to change the background color when you're in the dashboard for some reason, you can change it here and then choose, for example, what color can we Let's just change it up by making it green. So when you go to dashboards green, so for example, if you go to accounts orange or red orange, so if you want to keep it specific for a certain screen, you should specify options and then screen options if you want to keep it um, a global. So it will be applied to all the screens. Yeah. 
So we've successfully configured the header bar styles. So now that we've successfully configured the header bar styles and the title, let's just go a bit further, the next level. So if you'll take a look at the back button here on your, your account, as well as here on iOS, it doesn't look um, aligned with the style. So what can you do if the styles are not aligned with the back button and your required uh, header, header style? So what you could do is render your own, render your own header component or just for the specific uh, position for example uh, custom header left component so this one is actually called header back if you put a comma here header back so the header back has limited the properties for iOS and the back title is also specific to iOS but the, um, the gist of it is that you can't use this if your requirements are more specific or more complex than what the default provides so this is a step so this is the next step you need to there are some scenarios where you need to change the component being rendered here on the left on the back button so before we dive into this one it's going to be a bit of a challenge for uh, for people starting out so let's go with uh, the next section first so replacing the title with a custom component so this is the next step um, it does say that you need if you need more control so that's actually what I have already talked about earlier you need to control what gets rendered and not just the default components so for example the one that the documentation changed was the component here he replaced it with an image containing a logo of react native but for us we can opt to change it with a uh, simple you can opt to change it with a simple text component for example so if we render a header header title and hover over it we can see that it's a function that passes the following uh, props and returns a react native component so as you can see here the header title is a function that is passed with props and returns a react or react native component so this this is the pattern that we'll be following here so the props and then we'll just create a text for now so the text so the text we haven't imported text so we need to import text from react native and just simply say custom component title so this is now the custom component that you have created that ignores all the styles that we gave it earlier because that is meant or designed for the built-in text component provided by react navigation so for this one you will need to pass in your own style just like we did or without we do for normal react apps or react native apps for example color 
I'll change it to white. So it will take effect just like uh just like what we did here earlier. So that is the customization. If we ever need to specify a specific component for uh the header title. So let's not. For example, we are already satisfied with the title as it is. What we're experiencing a problem with is the back button, to be honest. It doesn't look good. So we will customize the header left instead. So the there's a header right and there's a header left. So if we just go with header left, it will just uh, override like this. So we keep the same pattern, a function that has props passed to it and just uh, create a, a fragment, an empty component. And you can see when you specify or override the header left or even header right, the if you specify the header right, if there is any built-in component here, it will get replaced. So for our example, header left. So we replace it with an empty component, which will not be empty soon enough. So what we can do is specify uh, a component. So what component should we do? We need the back button. So we can do a text component as simply as this one and then say back and just call it a day, right? But of course, if your app wants to be good and follow a standard UI for designs, for example, it should be an icon. So conveniently, since we're using Expo, we can add custom icons um, in our Expo application by simply opening our tab and just searching for Expo vector icons. It should be built in. Yeah, this link icons.expo.fyi. So this is a, a support support site provided by Expo that will allow you to search for the styles or icons that you need. For example, we need something with the left. So ant designs look good. This is uh, more specific for iOS. Chevron left. Why don't we do Chevron left? Seems good. If we click on the Chevron left icon, uh, Expo conveniently provides the import since we don't need to do that anymore. Just copy and paste. As well as the actual component itself. So this is a component ento and typo and then pass in three props name size and color. So where do we pass it here? We pass it here replacing the empty component. So let's just see what the effect. So what happened was it got replaced by the default got replaced with a Chevron left icon, which is normally pertaining to a back button, and just let's just change it to white to keep it consistent with our UI design. So on Android, it should be the same thing. There's no more that native Android behavior, that native iOS behavior. So, what do we do now? As you can see, if you try to click on it, it doesn't work. So, for the last part of this video, we will be ensuring that this button or this icon isn't just for show and we will make it so that it will uh, work just like the back button did, that the built-in back button, alright? So let's get started with making this uh, actually working. For this, we just need to create a new file because this code will require 
some additional lines which I don't recommend keeping in your main navigation container file because this file should contain all the code for the stack navigator, the stack screen, and any other component that will potentially be more uh, customized or complex in its own way should be separated properly. So you should create a new file so create a new folder called components and under there you create a new file and call it for example headerleft.js and then you will need to create the component by creating the function headerleft uh, you need to take in the props as well just in case you need them and then don't return the uh, the component immediately instead declare the curly brace then return the function after and then don't forget about the import and then the export default for the header left now for the import, you can use the auto import here. If you remove the end type icon, we can replace it with header left. There's a auto import there. And for the props to actually be passed here, we need to use the spread operator again, like so, so that the props that we're that were passed to the header left will be passed to our component just like the documentation specified okay so we will validate that in a second so the icon is back yay <laughs> and uh, we need to make it white again there we go and then the last parts are making it pressable so you can use any component any react native component that will allow you to press it as for me we'll use touchable opacity and wrap the icon component here and specify on press so when we press it, we will pass a function that will do what? So it should go back to the previous screen. So for now, we just want to validate what the props contain. So we'll click and we can see the following uh, properties, props. So it's an object containing a field called can go back, a property called label, a property called tint color so for whatever reason if you need that you can access it since we already passed the props here using the spread operator so the problem is there is no navigate prop just like we did see in uh, the other screens so props at navigation that navigate and for profile that go back we actually need the dot go back but the problem is the header component is not a screen so because it's not a screen there is no navigation prop being passed to it by default so how do we get a navigation object when we don't uh, when we aren't in the screen or we aren't in a stack that screen so we can use a, a tool provided by the React Navigation Library called uh, Use Navigation Hook. So to, to use that, you just create a variable named Navigation conveniently. And then it can be whatever you want, name you want, but it's more proper to use the navigation since it does it will do navigation. And just call the use navigation hook 
So the use navigation hook is a function that will return a navigation object to you. So then navigation object can be used just like how you, we used it in home screen and profile screen. So the only uh, limitation is this use navigation hook or function should be inside a navigation container. So if we were to create a component or a function outside of the navigation container, we cannot use the use navigation uh, hook. And also, it needs to be a React or React Native component. So hooks are only usable inside React or React, na React native components. So we, when you see the word use, it pertains to a hook, just like use state or use effect. So there we go. We can use it just like the normal navigation to go back. So, we are on the profile screen and we will click the go back, the back button. And there we go. But if you'll notice, we are on the dashboard or home screen, which is supposed to be the top level. If you can recall, this is supposed to be the top level and there should be no screen to go back to. Yeah, so this results in an error called the go back was not handled by any navigator because there's no more screens that it can go back to. So this is a problem and this should not be rendered here in the first place. So what do we do about it? We need to make the rendering of this back button conditional. So conditional meaning there should be some way where we check a certain field or property or something where if it's false there what let's make it into a question if there is no more screen that it can go back to it should not render but if there's a screen it can go back to it should render so it's it looks like a true or false kind of condition right so the answer was already um, staring us in the face. If you go back to our logs, you can see that the props that the header left passes contains a can go back uh, property. So this property is a boolean, true or false, that if you if we try to Comment this out again and just print the props. When we are on the dashboard or the home screen and we click the dash the back button, we can see that the can go back is actually false. So with that, we can establish our conditional rendering. Okay. So for the conditional rendering, we will not do it here. Instead, we can do it outside of this component. So there are two ways or two ways that I can show you how to do it. So the first one is using the ternary operator. So we'll still, we will still return a function, but before that we will use the ternary operator to check if it can go back. If it's true, then return the header. And if it's false or the else statement, which is represented by the colon, it should return nothing. Just like what happened here. So this is one way. And the other more readable way is to expand our um, function. And before we return it, we need to check the condition if props that can go back. So if you don't you no longer need to specify that the equals equals true. If it's true, it will go here. 
So return. Don't forget to return. And then else, you can return nothing or null. No value. And then go to profile. It should appear here. Go back. It should not appear here. And you can omit this code. So going to the profile screen, it will render. If it doesn't, nothing will render, which is great. Yeah, we successfully did it. We specify the custom header left component that the override, overridden or override the back button component, the default back button component here. So yeah, that's it. So you've successfully learned how to override the default header style, header styles, the title style, and even creating a custom header component in order to satisfy your UI requirements and even including conditional rendering for um, the top level screen. So yeah, thanks for watching and in the next video, we will be exploring the route parameters. So what if, for example, if you're the, the dashboard screen and you need to go to the profile screen, but before you do go to the profile screen, you need to pass some additional data like uh, user data, user ID or something, um, anything like profile name, profile information. So passing data from one screen to the other. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.